Welcome to the Craig and Greg Show, presented by Maximize Leadership. Now, here are Craig Owens and Greg Harris. Hey, welcome to the Craig and Greg Show. I'm Craig. This is Greg. We're glad to be back with you. We have a periodic series that we like to do where we look at two sides of the same issue. We want to point out something to you that could be a real builder for your leadership and on the flip side, something that might be killing your leadership. And so depending on which way you want to look at it, there's one thing that we want to amplify and there's one thing that we really want to squelch, if not eliminate uh, completely for your leadership. And so, Greg, let me let me tell you what the builder, I think, is, and then uh, you can uh, uh, share when you think it's appropriate what the flip side the killer is. But I think one of the big things that sets a leader apart from peers is being able to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And particularly as you build your culture of like daring, courageous leaders under you or with you, if you don't take responsibility, no one does, right? Well, if, if the boss didn't, right. whatever that means, yeah. then why would we take it? He's, he's shucking the responsibility, but it is such a freedom giver though. When someone says, I'll take responsibility for that. You're like, you, you weren't even really at all the meetings. Right. And it must feel great for people. Like it's a relief valve, you know, like takes the air out and they're like, okay, so we're not in this tension, but, but the responsibility really is not for other people's mistakes, just as a leader. And I think there's a difference between, well, you made a mistake, but as a team, let's be together and take responsibility and move on. Right. What, what do you think? Well, I, I think that I love what um, Stephen Covey, the way that he tries to uh, define responsibility or responsible, is able to respond. And, mm. and I think some people don't feel like, well, maybe I'm not able to step up here and respond. Mm -hmm. But those people that say, listen, I got enough like confidence, I've got enough security that I am able to respond to mm. say, uh, you know, I'll take the lead on this. I'll take the hit uh, on this if necessary. I'll make sure that this thing gets done. I think that really sets people apart. Those people that don't have the strength to do that, I think, is real quickly the 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 killer, the flip side killer that comes out is blame yep. or the blame game. And yep. why, why why is it a game? I mean, I, no one's keeping score. In fact, if you really look at leaders and they took responsibility three times, but they blame 19, right. it's, it's a slaughter. You're, you're a blamer, not a leader. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think it's so easy to blame. And maybe people feel like I need to be strong in, in dictatorial kind of a fun word to say, uh, versus, uh, yeah, I made a mistake or I, I let you make a mistake. That's on me. And there it's almost where, okay, what's the catch? Yes. Because we don't get a lot of examples. So leaders, if you want to, you know, kind of look outside the box and be an outlier as a leader, responsibility is probably one of your first things to embrace. And I, I don't mean take a bullet for somebody, no. but, but at the same time say, so I'm, I'm ultimately responsible. Yes. Right. The, the buck stops here, you know, whether you're a pastor or a teacher or principal or business owner. Um, I, I looked up a couple interesting things. Why responsibility? And I use this word almost as, as a draw or infectious. Um, I think there's there's some freedom of not being judged. Mm -hmm. That happens in there like, well, you know, I messed up on that project, but, you know, he won't give me any more projects. Or, you know, she, um, she gave it to her friend and I, I don't have any more authority anymore because I, I kind of messed up. Right. I think if it's communicated, hey, we can all be responsible. You know, it's, it's a team. And I think that's where I, r responsibility is so fresh for leaders and followers. Sure. Well, and I think one of the things that goes along with that responsibility that some people don't want is accountability. You know, Ooh. if somebody says, well, I'll be responsible for this project, but then at the same time, if they're saying, stop looking over my shoulder, stop checking in mm. with where I am, well, you, knew, you do need to be accountable to something. And I think that's what holds some people back from yeah. wanting to take responsibility is because that corollary accountability has to come along with it. And, oh, that, that sounds a little scary that, you know, 
I'm on the line for this. This is a this is a me growing up story with my sister, and it's a little bit of leadership or the lack of. Uh, something would happen at the house. Maybe we're playing catch inside, and we know it's not supposed to. But my sister's, you know, agreeing with me. But I was the instigator. I was let's play catch, and something got broke. It was a frame on my grandpa and grandma's that fell over. The glass broke. Well, you know, I was younger. It's like, well, I didn't get the vacuum. I just picked up the pieces, you know. And my sister had to say, you know, uh, Greg broke this frame. I says, no, Gail did. She didn't catch the ball. Whoops. <laughs> what ball? And then it was, yeah. you knew better. Yeah. But I was going to blame it on my sister. Like, yeah, she didn't catch it. What were you playing catch in the house for anyway, Greg? And so I even got in more trouble for playing catch and blaming my sister. Yeah. You know, and I think that's us in leadership sometimes is, well, maybe if we take responsibility, they won't respect us hmm. or they won't look up to us or honor us the way we perceive leadership should be, but sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was once, don't tell anything about your sister, just my sister today. <laughs> I was once in working in a environment that was very unhealthy environment that the, the senior leader, um, was definitely, you know, n he never made a mistake. Okay. And so somebody else always had to take the blame. And, um, <laughs> well, what ended up happening is, is in our staff meetings, um, I would step in sometimes when another, you know, somebody that's a peer, it's not like they, they reported to me or something where we mm -hmm. were kind of on the same level. But if th something was being directed at them at, at some point when it, the heat got a little bit more or a little too much, they would kind of throw it at me. They would say, well, Craig, and then I would, and I would just sit there, even though I really didn't have very much of a say, I would just sit there because then the attention got turned off them mm -hmm. and got turned on me. And then I would sit there and I'd take it for a little bit. But then I would go to that coworker, that teammate later after the meeting and say, hey, listen, um, you know, th there's some stuff that you should own a little bit farther. I know the heat is on, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I think that that's one of the things that leaders can do for their, their fellow teammates is that you can say, you know, I have a greater capacity to be able to take that on right now. So right. I, I can, I'll take some of those hits. But there does have to be a boundary. At some point, you're like, okay, listen, not everything that went wrong in this organization falls on me. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm willing to step in for you to take some of this um, going forward. Um, one of the easiest things would have been just to go, well, why are you pointing to me? It wasn't me. Look at, I've got all of my documentation right here. You know, the CYA, I've mm -hmm. got all of my notes that, you know, I did, I covered myself and, and I could point it blame right back on somebody else. It's a little bit of a harder thing to go. Okay, uh, I'm just I'm just going to sit here and I'll take this one. And, and dealing with it in a private setting mm -hmm. is is more of a better learning setting. Yep. You know, I think the the own it. Uh, so I'm thinking of someone you know, really respect them, love them, but I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, they didn't make great choices, and yet when asked about it, they didn't want the consequences or the accountability. Mm -hmm. And then you get that squirrel thing. Well, you know, four years ago, you know, I, I didn't do that. Okay. Or, you know, three months ago, you know, Billy did that. What, 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 not, Billy's not even in this family. Right. So I think owning it is just a really, it's an attractive thing for me. Like, yeah, I, I didn't show up. I, I didn't give my all. I, I didn't follow up. I didn't have it checked or, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, now I learned. And to me, a lot of this is learning examples. And that's what I love about what responsibility, you know, it teaches life lessons. You can tell that person in your staff meeting, hey, I, I, I know what you did, but that's not really accurate, is it? Right. And, and, and you gave them grace to say, no, I, I just didn't want all the heat. Right. Well, in this case, I was just telling you, you know, this person, it's all on her. I mean, you did it, you know, no one else did it with you. you yes. There's no accomplish, you yep. know, you, you did it yourself. And I think owning it is such an important thing. Well, and I think you used a word just a couple of minutes ago that I think is for, for leaders is really key is owning the consequences too. Mm. So when a leader can stand up in front of the group and say, um, even if it was a group decision, like the whole team agreed on something and it didn't go right, when the senior leader steps in and says, okay, guys, this project didn't go well, 
that's on me. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to own that. And I'm also, here's the consequences. You know, I'm going to um, have to, you know, maybe not get a quarterly dividend check that I was supposed to get, mm-hmm. or I'm going to miss out on something. When, when somebody owns it like that, the incredible freedom that you give to everybody else on your team that says, hey, you know what? Not that I'm going to drop the ball or try to, but if I do, mm. maybe I could take responsibility for that. Maybe I could own up for that because it's not going to be, you know, I'm not going to feel the full wrath, you know, the right. lightning bolts coming down on me. Um, <laughs> but I think that owning the consequences, most insecure leaders, they never want the consequences to attach to them. I, I have been in a meeting with a, with a guy and he's, he's not a super leader yet but he's trying, you know, and, um, he would, you know, say, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. But you were supposed to the first time. Hmm. So do you need help? And then coachability comes in there a little bit too. No, I got it. Well, you didn't have it the first time. So how, right. why would the second time be? What, any what changed? <laughs> right. I, th- I think, you know, quality work is one thing that happens out of responsibility is everyone just sort of ups their game. Mm-hmm. Oh, we can try again. Yep. You know, we're, we're not all fired, you know? Uh, and I think the other part that happens is, col- is collaboration or cooperation, particularly with different divisions or yes. entities that, you know, work together. I, I just love responsibility from a standpoint of it's, it's really clear if, if, you, if you're okay in your leadership shoes. Yes. Um, the blame on the other side, Craig, is so dang easy, isn't it? I mean, well, it's easy, but, golly. you know, so you, you and I know somebody from our past that I, you know, I'm not going to mention his name, but as soon as I start telling the story you're going to know who what, i'm talking about I, when, when that happens what do i do put my head down or yeah, okay. just go do the right. gotcha. gotcha um there was a guy that would promise you everything without you asking so i i remember one time where <laughs> i i made mention that um my wedding anniversary was coming up that's all i i just mentioned it and then he started telling me how he was going to get me a limo and get me a reservation at this exclusive restaurant and all this kind of stuff and I just sat there and just went, mm-hmm, like this. And, you know, I made my own plans to celebrate our anniversary. And then, you know, later on when I said something like, I said, hey, um, you, you, uh, you know, where was the limo? We were sitting at home. We weren't. But I said, where was the limo? We were sitting at home. And then inside my mind, I'm like, just wait, what's the blame going to be? And he just started ticking off all of these, oh, well, this and this and this and this. And you know what? When you when you don't accept responsibility and you're doing the blame all the time, you really become a laughing stock because everybody knows what's going to happen. Y- you, well, I know you had an experience with him too, multiple times as well <laughs> as I did. That when he starts saying what he's going to take responsibility for, you're just sitting there, just going, mm-hmm. just can't wait to hear the stories on this one of how it's not going to come about. Well, and I think there's a piece to this, uh, the killer, right? So the the. The builder is responsibility, accountability, maybe consequences, owning it. Uh, the killer is that blame or excuses. And I've seen people throw other under the others under the bus, and you're like, they didn't even touch this project. Right. So <laughs> next time you need them to step up and help your team and cooperate or collaborate, they're, you, you must just check right. them out. They're Absolutely. Not doing that. Why, why would they do that? You know, so the blame one got, got, got some intriguing things. So I think defensiveness mm-hmm. is a really big one for blaming. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you talked about like a, a weaker version of a leader, you know, wants to blame a, a person who is growing in their leadership will, will ac- accept more accountability and responsibility. But the defensive mechanism that we just have inherently, like, well, I don't, I don't want to be punished that bad. Well, you should have thought about that, you know, two weeks ago, Johnny, when you, you promised the limo, you right. know. Um, I think the other part that is it kind of, it protects that ego, but it's a fragile one. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got ego. Sure. And, and, you, and our balance as leaders is to keep it in check. Yes. You know, um, we, when I had a, a nice team of uh, service folks and we were working with clients and my mantra to my three teammates were if something goes bad i'll take the blame and i'll deal with the client if something goes really well and they comment i'll i'll send it to you guys to you all because it's a positive one that you you really didn't control and certainly the blame you didn't control 
so I often would just say, I'll take the bad blame and you take the good credit. Um, and that seemed to really free them to try harder. Absolutely. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Like, so blaming just cripples the amount of, well, it's not in my job description, hmm. you know, or, or, yes. or I've, I've documented everything because I knew you were going to blame me. Yes. Right. Yep. Now, now you almost have a teammate against you. And that's the problem with blaming. It's just a cancer. Oh, absolutely. And <sighs> it, it, it spreads because, you know, well, you're pointing the finger at me, so now I'm going to point it at you, and you're looking for who else can, you know, I point it at. And, and then ultimately there's going to be one fall guy in the organization. You know, everything ends up at, at, at that one person that can't, you know, defend <sighs> themselves. So, yeah, it definitely is a cancer that spreads. I think the other one that popped out, because I'm, you know, I have to be careful not to go through our little uh, Rolodex. That's an old term for you young leaders, but, you know, going through the Rolodex and I thought, I think that person just loves to be in control. So there aren't mistakes yeah. and very difficult for a controlling person to say, I'll take responsibility for something he didn't control or she didn't control. Yeah, you know, I, that's a good point. Let's, let's, let's kind of build on that for a little bit. Being a control freak is not the same thing as taking responsibility for a project. Mm -mm. No, in, in fact, they could be polar. Yeah. The control freak part is almost like I don't want any mistakes. I don't want any people looking to see if, you know, we messed this up or we, we didn't hit our goal or our, our, our quarterly statements or whatever. And it's not about controlling the outcome. It's actually engaging in your team or the project. But they they want to control they don't want yeah. any problems well that's in a you know unicorn world yeah. for, for most of us and um i think the whole blame game is so easy but gosh i i have done it um and then th partly the owning it after that was even worse yes right because i blamed and then yeah. i i covered for it and i still got the chastisement right. well deserved for not completing something or taking care of a business or whatever. But I think for folks, you know, in leadership, it's a balance because you don't want to fall on a false sword. Yes. But I don't know if responsibility has anything to do with a sword. No, I don't think so. I don't think that the uh, responsibility and the corresponding accountability, I don't think is supposed to be fatal. Mm. Um, and that's, that's what the people oh. are, you know, the falling on the sword that, you know, you just like, well, we're going to do it this way. And they're like, fine, I'll just take care of everything. Well, that's that's not what we were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, just because we we you know <laughs> didn't want to do it exactly the way that you had laid it out, doesn't mean that now you're just going to take it away from everybody and I'll fall on my sword and I'm 100 percent responsible. That's yeah. not it, no. it's not supposed to be fatal because in a way I think that's kind of a backward blame. It's almost like saying you're not going to be able to handle this anyhow, and and I don't want to have to blame you later. So I'll just blame you right now for being incompetent and I'll just take it all on myself. Such a you know positive, you know, confidence builder, isn't yeah. it? Because I'm gonna work eighty hours a week, but that's fine. That's fine. You go home and have your weekend and I don't have a week <laughs> and it becomes this whole martyr complex then, which is still throwing blame on everybody else. Like why aren't you here to pick it up? Because you mm -hmm. won't let me. <laughs> you know I, I think your uh, your comment on the fatality of it, it almost feels like oh if I take responsibility, I'm probably done. No, I, I think around the corner is a freedom, not just for you, the leader, but for you who are developing other leaders. That's our definition. Yes. You're going to find freedom for people to, hey, you know, I, I'll, I'll pitch in. I don't, you don't need to do it all. I don't want you to right. get in trouble, you know. So people are more helpful if you create a responsibility or responsible mm -hmm. culture of leadership. So well, it's, I, it's and, not easy either. But And so, you know, talk about about this a little bit like i think about in a team sport um if you had called a play in the huddle where you're going to hand the ball off to the running back there is all kind of, everybody on the team has a responsibility mm -hmm. i have to pull i have to crack back i have to stalk block i have to get the ball to the running back in the right spot He's got to protect the ball as he goes around. I mean, everybody has a responsibility mm -hmm. to do that. And it's not in a, in a leadership, in an organization, it's not saying, okay, you have 100% responsibility for this entire project that's going on. There are everybody, it's a shared responsibility. Now, if that ball gets fumbled, 
you could sit there and everybody could stop. Well, I did my part. How come you didn't block this way? Oh, how come you didn't do it? Well, how come? Or you can jump on the ball and pick it up and say, okay, well, let's, we got the ball and we can run another play. Another play to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think the, the, the responsibilities, I, I, I've obviously coached for, you know, quite a few years in, in high school level. And I, I mean, I, if I got $10 for every time I heard the word, I would have probably, you know, quit working 10 years ago or whatever, but that everybody has the responsibility. Do your responsibility. Know your responsibility. That's it. Tackle, you're, you're not responsible for the backside tight end. Uh, running back, you're not responsible for the person who snaps the ball to the quarterback. Right. You have to trust it. And I think that's where responsibility builds trust. Yes. Blame basically ruins a- trust. Well, it's a can- I like your word before cancer. I mean, it just it's a cancer. It spreads because then you're like, can I really trust this person now? And maybe you play a little less harder, right? Yeah, maybe, you, maybe you try a little less. Maybe you don't show up early yeah. at work or maybe you don't volunteer for that committee because like, well, last time I got stung by a bee trying to you know, help out and they all got me. Yeah. So I think blame is so easy and responsibility isn't. And I think as you know, leaders, we're human. Yep. And um, we we'd like less pain you know, more pleasure. But I think the responsibility, if we get to the other side of it is it's trust filled corporations, it's organizations that work well together. They pitch in blame. No one wants to lift a hand because they don't want to get in trouble. Well, why don't you um, kind of wrap it up for us by, by talking to our leaders today that are watching, maybe what's one, two or three things that you could think of that a leader could self reflect on to say, am I accepting an appropriate amount of responsibility or am I playing the blame game? What are some questions that they could ask themselves or maybe some changes that they might be able to make uh, in order to uh, really kind of ascertain where they are on that uh, on that scale between responsibility I, I, and blame? I like the word ascertain. So one of the things I would say as a leader for all of us is to really be reflective as self-aware. Mm-hmm. Did I contribute to this? And if I contribute, meaning I could omit or commit mm-hmm. a contribution. So if I omitted to show up at the committees, I got to be responsible somewhere. Right. Um, if I gave it to a friend in the organization or our team, but there was probably a better equipped person, but I was playing favorites, I could take some responsibility for that. Um, but th- the other part I would say is ascertain, is the person you're including on your team or maybe the assignment or sharing the assignment, are they capable of it or are you setting them up? Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that we really have to be honest about as leaders is if I delegate or empower is it fair? Because I can't give a really important project to a newbie. That's not fair. Right. Right. But I'm so busy. I just, you know, oh, you're available. That's not fair. You know, you, you got to take some responsibility, Greg, because, you know, Johnny wasn't there yet. You needed him to be there, but he's not. So I would say those would be the two. Ascertain yourself. Where did you contribute, omit or commit? And I think the other part is, d- did you ascertain their ability capabilities, competencies, character. Can, can they do this? Can they run the flag for you? Mm-hmm. And if they can't, then it's a little bit on you or, or you want to have them try it. But go in with it, I think, ascertaining, can they do it? And did, did I contribute to the failure or the blame? Not try and blame, but just Absolutely. knowing that, you know, I, I, I probably need to learn as well, you know, as a leader. And, and it's not like you're playing, you know, Wizard of Oz. You're, it's just you're, you're, you're handing out things and they grow and Sometimes it doesn't work. It doesn't mean they're bad or it doesn't mean that was a bad choice, but don't, don't hide. And I think right. a lot of people hide. Yep, absolutely. And they, you know, they don't come to the table saying, hey, I, I'm going to take some of this too. I like, this is my last uh, parting and we'll finish up on this episode, but I've always done this uh, a little bit with people like if you missed a meeting or, you know, hey, I didn't call you back right away or you were looking for me to send you something and I didn't get on it right away. And I'll just pick a number. I'll take 63% blame. Responsibility. Sure. And it just takes the air out for the other person. Sure. Oh, and I don't even know if they did the math. So that means I'm only 37%? Oh, that's not bad. So I think I'll, I'll take 63. And they're always gracious when you do it. And I think that's where we are in leadership. Grace and keep growing. Yes. Well, and, and if you want a little bit of help, this is what we do in our coaching huddles. We've got a, a, a bigger perspective. When you're in the trenches, it's really hard for you to see sometimes beyond 
well, where's my role in this organization? We're going to be able to ask you some questions in our coaching huddle times and give you kind of a bigger perspective and say, you know, maybe you're taking taking on too much responsibility and not bringing other teammates along. Or maybe we might say, hey, you know, you you need to step up and take a larger share of the responsibility. So that's what we uh, try to do in our coaching huddles. If you go to MaximizeLeadership.com, we have a link on there about our coaching huddles. There's a form that you can fill out. There's absolutely no obligation. You're just filling out the form saying, I'd like to know more. Here's my situation. Can you help me with this? Is this something that would fit in the coaching huddle uh, scenario? And we'll get back to you and we'll let you know. If you've got ideas about uh, topics you'd like us to share here, maybe there's a question in your mind about something that you're doing in, in your organization, you can leave it as a comment below or on Twitter. We're at Maximize Podcast. You can reach out to us that way as well. And uh, then uh, we might use one of your ideas on an upcoming episode. If you haven't already, make sure on YouTube that you subscribe and click the bell because uh, other than our monthly, uh, twice a month episodes that we share, we share some uh, short snippets as well. Uh, Greg has uh, these max minutes that he does. And if you click that bell so you're notified, that way you'll get that content immediately as soon as it comes out. We're in your corner. We're cheering you on. We want to see you be great leaders. So stay tuned. we got lots more content coming up for you soon. Get in touch with Craig and Greg through Twitter at Maximize Podcast or at MaximizeLeadership.com. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of The Craig and Greg Show.